if Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. <laughs> 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 Everybody was so horrified and disgusted by that episode. People were ashamed, and um, very quickly, the families were gi- were given um, reparations. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show. Uh, we are going to be chatting with Ellen Everett Hopman a little bit later uh, about witches. Of course, we had recorded this one right before the Thomas Hatzis interview. Somehow Thomas ended up out first. But yeah, this was part of our little Halloween. Day before Halloween, we figured we'd do some witch shows for the live stream, for the live people. Uh, doesn't seem quite so relevant a month later, but a couple back-to-back witch shows. And there is quite a bit of correlation between the two of them. So They're always relevant. These magical always. witch type shows are always relevant. I'm married to a witch, so I understand. <laughs> I get it, 100%. Um, and I mean that in a positive way, of course. But, uh, yeah, fun story. And she did confirm the uh, the shroom. The brooms? Shroom the shrooms juice on brooms? the brooms. Shrooms, brooms. Shroom, brooms, stick. Who, your wife? No. Oh, I thought you meant. Ellen. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought you meant your wife could confirm the shroom and the No, broom. she was quite shocked when I brought it oh, up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. yeah. But anyway, it's a great chat with Ellen. Of course, we got. Grant. Oh, she really confirmed the broom handle thing. Actually, would, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I was saying. That's yeah. what I was saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just I forgot about that part. Train wrecked it. Sorry, so there's Graham. I fucking train wrecked the intro, Dunlop. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> All right. So your guest train wrecked the interview. Not not your guest. Sorry, that came out the wrong way. I'm not trying to blame him. I'm blaming trying to blame Graham. But so we're here. We got no interview tonight. Recording an intro. Yep. Tanked that, and then you interrupted the flow of the intro. That's it's okay. One of those days. It's one of those days. But we got the jingle board working. I think we're live. We got that working. And we're recording a podcast. So it's fun. How you been? Nothing stolen this week? Uh nope, nothing. nothing a little more optimistic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little yeah, having a better week. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm happy when your stuff doesn't get stolen. I'm just indifferent when it does. <laughs> That's good. We got a little bit of nice warm weather still. We got that snowstorm and some cold weather. And then, you know, the sun keeps bouncing back. That global warming creeping in to give us just a couple more weeks of warmth. We got to do an episode on that because there's a lot of propaganda out there about the global warming. Global warming? Actually, one of the essays I'm going to read in the Black Budget Budget episode, (laughs) it talks about conspiracy theories. It's It's a Harvard paper from Cass Sunstein back in 2008 or nine, I think right after Obama was in there and it was how the government should handle conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists and stuff. It's really good. Oh, nice. It'll be, it'll be interesting to read that, but they talk about global warming. They, they talk about global warming and climate change in that, in that way that a bunch of people like, you know, there's all these people that don't believe it. And That's good. So it's really interesting to see what, uh, you know, what they'll use as uh, conspiracies that, are not conspiracies because they definitely admit some of the conspiracies like the Gulf of Tonkin and, and Northwoods. So they admit that there's some legit ones out there, but as well, a benchmark, they're that. using ones that, you know, are sort of showing to be true conspiracies 10 years later. I'm looking forward to that. Of course, people don't know what we're talking about. That's, we started reading a couple essays, things like that in the black budget. What's the black budget? The black budgets <laughs> are a little bonus we give to our, our supporters, you know, we do the value for value model around here when PayPal lets us. Um, of course, next week, the Stripe will roll out. And uh, we might find a way to keep the two of those going out once. But for a while, it'll be Stripe um, until we can figure out a way to get them both working at once. But, yeah. Okay, let's, let's back up a we, bit here. 
So the black budget is a separate feed, right? That, any, that okay. That they can anybody can get access to it with any donation, one time or a monthly donation. This but if the true. monthly donation happens, you've only got a few more days to use PayPal before we have to switch over to Stripe because PayPal shut us down a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we got back up and running, but it was kind of well, a scary. Oh, I wanted so. to mention, like we had that. Now I've seen PayPal subscriptions dropping off at an unprecedented rate. What? Yeah, probably in the last week. Off of our, off of yeah, our show? Probably in the last week, it's been like 20. What? Yeah, 20 or 25. <gasps> There's a, so I don't know, read, I don't know if read it's a that. reaction to us bitching about PayPal, but that many people haven't signed up for Patreon. So I don't know if they're maybe waiting for Stripe. Maybe some people oh, are canceling waiting for Stripe. Yes, maybe, I'm yeah. sending the email out that okay. I always do. I'm not getting a lot of replies. But at this point, with some of the emails we've gotten from people with their PayPal stories... Um, it really makes me wonder if PayPal isn't just fucking around. So it, it is super important that you guys go check your PayPal subscriptions because since the PayPal debacle, we're losing support quicker than we're <laughs> and gaining it. <laughs> and it was, we were hoping it would be the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to read that? I do have a, a note from one of our listeners about PayPal. Do we have a jingle for that? Here we go. Spam. Graham. Graham. Yeah, you can email me. Graham at GrahamAmerica.com, or you can also uh, contact us through the website. Oh, your phone just flew by. That's just great. The website and uh, on Instagram, Twitter, there's all different ways to contact us. So I had a reoccurring sub on PayPal, those fucks, canceled the sub for no reason, blocked the payment for the damn thing, then locked my account over a balance overdue. Of three thirty three that they fucking caused. So we, ca- we that's <laughs> we're in. <laughs> Oops. What? Well, I, that three thirty three was probably our payment. So PayPal fucked. We got fucked on our payment. He got fucked on it, and then they locked him down for six months. No, is that what happened? I think so. Let I me finish reading. Let me it. finish reading. It was a big ordeal to get the thing turned back on. Then they had the nerve to tell me I was in breach of contract for having the overdue balance for the payment they didn't accept, and that's why they locked the account. Fuck PayPal. PayPal fucking sucks. And their support people are arrogant, self-righteous assholes. Maybe I shouldn't have read that on the, on the show, but... Fuck it. <clears throat> but we've had people complain about PayPal uh, taking them off without them even... I mean, other podcasts have had the same complaint. Um, but this is different now, obviously, since we got shut down and now, um, you know, they're playing games with these other people. I, I really don't think it's intentional. They just don't know what's going on. That's kind of what I'm hoping for, too. But, you know, we better be better safe than sorry. And hopefully the the sub- subscribers dropping off is more to do with them jumping to Stripe, waiting for the Stripe link to go up next week. And they're going to sign up on that. That was supposed to be we'll December see, 1st. So alarming. this should be coming out on the, hopefully in the 29th, are we? Or? It's a little alarming to see sport going in the wrong direction. Always a little. We're trying to get to the 1%, <laughs> not back down to the 0.5%. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, grandamerica.ca slash support, guys, if you can, when you can. The website's a little slow right now. It's because we're waiting to jump servers. That's going to cost a little bit of money, too. So that all boils down to support. Yeah. And it all helps. We want to thank everybody because we couldn't do it without you. All the monthly payments and all that come straight, unless straight the, from all the listeners. So Unless there's people just not supporting because they don't like the show anymore, if that's the case. That's fine, too. We dug it up. That's I mean, fine, that's too. Our, that's our problem. Just tell us why, maybe. Just let us know. Yeah. Don't just leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, what else you got? Let's uh, grandmarket.ca slash support. Now we got that out of the way early. Well, do you want to keep the housekeeping going and talk about the cabin, contact at the cabin with Randall Carlson in May? Yeah. Let's just talk about that now while sure. we can. You start. There's uh, I'll pull up the flyer. There's two weekends in May and the week in between. There's like three groups of people that uh, we're going to be hanging out with Randall Carlson in this huge, huge cabin in Colorado near... Um, Pagosa Springs. I should have all this in front of Elk me. Oak Lake Lodge, Pagosa Springs. Yeah. And that's kind of close to the Four Corners, so I envision right us doing corners. a little like, road trip to the Four Corners, maybe doing oh, some yeah. CE5s by the there'll Four be some Corners. C- there'll be some heavy sky fucking watching. sea setting oh, yeah, going definitely. on. There'll be some sky watching. There'll be some dope smoking. Oh, yeah. well, there'll for be some, some fireside chatting. You know, it's a 122-acre private ranch we'll be on. 
It's got like eight bedrooms or ten bedrooms or something like that. A game room, a private lake. Randall's going to be doing some like Randall's presentations doing some as well. Presentations, and, like, we'll maybe do like a podcast question and answer oh, thing. Oh yeah, it's going to be just a blast. We'll yeah. be down there. Randall will be down there. If anybody wants to know what we're talking about, they can easily search Randall Carlson Grime America, and one of his like four long episodes or five long episodes will pop up. Really interesting. Yeah, so I mean, we do want this thing to sell. It'd be great to sell some tickets to our supporters. Of course, if you're until December 10th, so one more week basically after this comes out, we're that our su- open it up there. until we open it up to the general public, and then you know, not only that, there's a couple people like Greg over at Higher Side and Tinfoil that are going to start sharing the news as well. So you know, we really like to get the Grand Americans in there first. If you're not a supporter, you can always just go sign up for a buck a month or send us five bucks at PayPal.me/slash Grand America. Get on that support list so you can get a ticket now. Um, there's, there were 75 total. I want to say we're about 20% or more sold out at this point. Um, so Randall Carlson will be there. Of course, the price of the ticket includes breakfast and lunch. You're on your own for dinner. We left dinners open so people can go out or barbecue or do whatever they sort of want. Um, so we've got one, one, out, one group is May 17th to 20th. Another from May 20th to 23rd, and another from May 23rd to 27th. And there is an option if you want to go for the whole 10 days, right? Like, I'll be there for yeah. the whole 10 days. Yeah, Grant will be there the whole 10 days. I'll be there in two separate trips. Um, I might still end, We'll see what happens. I'll be there I'll be there a couple times for sure. 25-person uh, limit on each of the three Grand Randall Carlson tours. Tran- transportation is provided. It, if you're from the Durango Airport, we'll get you to and from. We'll get you to and from the tours. We're going to have a couple of big buses. Um, lunch, breakfast, first come, first serve on roomings and everything like that because there's like some queen bedroom options, there's bunk options, there's tent options. Uh, you're responsible for your own dinner. Each group participates in one tour and one talk for sure, but I know Randall pretty well. It's going to be it's basically going to be a weekend of great conversation between Grand Americans and Randall Carlson's and fun, fun bunch. Um, <clears throat> Breakfast on your way out. You'll get breakfast on the way out before you leave. Um, tents, of course, will have access to all house am- am- amenities. So go through the pricing quick. We got a single private space, which is a queen bedroom. There's seven fifty for a single. If you took put two people in there, that's twelve fifty. We have to take a tent spot out since it's a it's a, it's a head count limit at the. At the multi-million dollar Airbnb, we have a hard limit, and if we go over it, they will charge us money, and we're paying a fucking fortune for this place, so we can't afford any extra charges. Yeah. Our margins are pretty tight on this thing, so... Just get to get Randall there, really. Yeah. Um, we got bunk room singles at 650 pull-outs at 600 and tents at 500 Bring your own tent. We'll feed you. You feed your own dinner. 122 acres. Great for all sorts of fun stuff. Fires. It's gonna be blast. I'm gonna get your tickets. So here's the email right now. Write this shit down. Here we go. CAC twenty nineteen at hdtravel dot me. C A C twenty nineteen at hdtravel dot me. There's a link in the show notes that downloads the flyer and it'll have all this shit I just read. All right, that was fun. Now let's get to the real stuff. What you got? Well, I picked out a couple of listener synchronicities that seem appropriate for this episode with Ellen. I don't know why, but they, they just feel like they're you know meant for this as opposed to other ones. So I can read them if you want to do a little synchro jingle. A little synchro jingle? You sound, you sound quiet or something. Like that. I think that mic might be a problem. I'm starting to wonder. I want a good skull from a synchronicity Graham reads it out, then Dara might give it to me Hey, don't you please read it low, yeah, yeah So here's my story, which seems like a synchronicity My wife's grandmother, who raised her, passed away this year At the funeral, in the graveyard, when she was buried My wife stepped away for a moment because she was upset. She felt something on her wrist. And when she turned her hand over, it was a wasp. And it stung her. The last time she was stung was in her grandmother's yard as a little girl. She came home from the funeral, which was in Manitoba, to Halifax. She got in late. We had a drink and went to bed about 1 a.m. 
after telling me the story about the wasp. About 5 a.m., our cat, Corona, came in and started meowing in a way that sounded like talking. The way she does, cats do that. Uh, it's weird, eh? Isn't it weird? Fucking cats. They change their whole, their whole meow and they start doing this weird, hello. <laughs> Take it easy. It's not quite like that. They say hello. Hello. They <laughs> There's a jingle. There's a jingle waiting uh, to happen. <clears throat> so th- that's the way she does it when she comes in from the rain. I went back to sleep and two hours later, my mother called. My father had passed away. Later that day, we made plans to go to Moncton to help my mother get ready for my father's funeral. After packing and get everything ready, the last thing I do before I leave the house for extended periods of time is shut down my Mac. As I sat on the couch, logging off to shut it, up, to shut it down, I felt something like a tag on my shirt bothering me. I reached back and grabbed what was on my neck and threw it to the ground. It was a wasp. I was not outside that day, and there were no doors or windows open. I did not see it flying around. The last time I was stung by a wasp was as a teenager riding my motorbike when they would get caught up in my shirt. I have no problems with wasps. They love beer, so if they come around, I will pour some out and let them have it. Everyone that knows me, including my wife, knows that I have no problem with them. I even have a picture of me drinking out of a can of beer with the wasp on the can. I always say they won't bother you if you just leave them alone. So this was totally random and weird, all of it. Random wasp synchro? Well, and the cat and the, and the father passing away, right? Like the cat knew right after they came back from the funeral with the two wasps. Your mic's bugging me. Oh, yeah? Try like unplugging it and plugging it back uh, in. Right now? Yeah, that's a tough one. I don't, I don't like rating those ones. They seem too heavily personal. You don't have to rate it. Okay, yeah, I won't. No problem. Anyways, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the synchro. There yeah. is there is quite a few Good that happen too around. For like all the loss. Yeah, feel exactly. Free. Yeah. Um, speaking of thanks, I want to do do a shout out to uh, Mike and the guys over at OBDM. Oh, good. Took yeah. the time to make us the great uh, new little YouTube thing for our YouTube audience. It's it, like moves around and a fucking UFO flies by every once in a while and the joint's smoking and it's just great. So big thanks. Big shout out to OBDM. Of course, they're over on the Grand America Network, Grand America, bleh, Grand America FM, GrandAmerica.ca slash FM, where we got a stream of us and OBDM and Cruising with Steak, Cat in the Box. Now I got to name them all. Fuck. Yeah, good job. Uh, walk through the mind. We get the no agenda replays there, and uh, Nick the Rat. Who else? I'm missing a bunch. Tim Foil Hat. Is there more? There's lots. Oh, culture. I don't even know because Adam runs it. So ask Adam; he'll tell you everyone that's on there. Even better, head over to grabamerica.ca/fm and listen for a couple of days, and you'll know who's there. Well, some new shows coming out there too. We're working with some new people. Going to come on board. So give us all a spot to go live where they can't shut us off. Mind you, YouTube's been pretty good to us. We can't complain too much. PayPal, on the other hand, they've been kind of fucky, but. Ready for another synchro? Yeah. Graham, as promised, one of my more promising synchros of the last year. This may be too long to share. Actually, it's not that bad. Oh, it goes quite a ways. No problem. Okay. Here we go. But there's only one fitting rating for it. <laughs> and it should be obvious to Durbin. To if who? you like it, feel free to read it on the show. You can read either to the who? Po- Durbin. Who's Durbin? You, Darren. Like, you know, just Durbin. I don't get it. It's okay. You don't have to get it. Do you just get like it? call me Graham, you know? Oh. Yeah. Wouldn't it be like Dern? Where does B come from? Maybe he's saying that Dern, like it sounds like in that uh, jingle, Dern in the UFO. Uh, Dern, Graham. Yeah, Dern. You can read either the poem first or its explanation or just one or the other. Oh, well, does that mean, well, can, can I read both the poems? Then? Okay, I'll read the explanation. The explanation. I was on my way to the local native reservation 
for a run for tax-free cigarettes. My brand is Signals. To the Indian res? And that night, on a quest for Signals, I was rewarded with a batch of Signals of a different kind from the Cosmic Complexity Machine. It was the depths of winter that night. I had my two terriers, Dr. Chow and Steve Jenkins, along for the ride. I was listening to... Steve f- Jenkins? That's his dog's name? Yeah, that's awesome. Right? <laughs> Do you think he says Steve Jenkins every time? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Dr. Chow, Steve Jenkins. <laughs> Dr. Chow, Steve Jenkins, let's go. I was listening to a Philosophy Now podcast about Hegel, and right before that, I'd been listening to Grimerica about the Nazi International. And before that, Gordon White talking to a guest about Gematria. Jumanji. Jumatria. You don't remember that what is? You no. remember what that is? No. The numbers and the letters. I don't know. Marty Leeds. Oh right. No, is that Marty? Flat Earth or Marty Leeds? I think is that is that what Marty does a Jumatria? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't remember the Jumatria. It didn't didn't resonate. I just found out that the number eighty eight had been stolen from the Christ by Twats who worshipped old Adolf and was quite upset by it. And the letter H is eight in a standard numerology in Gematria. Yeah, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, number eight. Oh, That's what Marty like was doing on the so one to 13, to 13 down to one for the Bible. And remember, like, all the words, like, um, like Jesus means it's, like, got a crazy number to it. Yeah. That's, and um, I'm a numbers guy, too, but that stuff's just... It's just beyond you? Yeah. I don't know if that's the word. <laughs> it's over your head? Could be. It just doesn't resonate with you. That's right. Yet. Yet. Maybe this will change your mind. Better keep that finger pointed up, bucko. <laughs> and the letter H is eight in standard numerology in Gematria. So I'm driving along the back roads, and in the distance, I see eight pairs of eyes reflecting my headlights. The eyes belong eight to Eight pairs? Yeah, eight pairs. So 16 eyes? Okay. <laughs> How's he count all those eyes that fast? It's a lot it's of eyes easy. to count. It's, it's, you're down a country road. There's eight pairs of eyes. Yeah. Okay. The eyes belong to a herd of deer digging for seed in the four degree Fahrenheit moonlight, moonlit fields. I slowed way down and they watched me drive by without running away. The podcast about Hegel was really grooving on about the terms thesis, antithesis, and synthesis was added later to explain a more complex binary upward spiral in the evolution of philosophical thought structures. So I've got H's and eights on the brain and my new little terriers were acting hungry. So I stopped at an all night convenience store and made a purchase and the synchros really started rolling. The purchases came to eight eighty eight, so I bought the lottery ticket in the picks and won eighty eight dollars. Where's that cut? <laughs> <laughs> he probably donated it. He probably, probably donated did. eight eighty eight or something like that. Eight eighty eight. Yeah, we don't have an eight eighty eight. Oh, you can enter whatever you want. Synchro rating? You don't you have an 888 as a synchro we, we rating? Got, we got a thing the other day for eight bucks a month. I wonder if that's him. Yeah, maybe. This is an old email. Then six people canceled. It's an old email. <laughs> eight people canceled. <laughs> yeah. 88. <laughs> we, we don't have 88. I'll give you an 8.88 if Darren doesn't. Because he seems a little, Darren seems a little jacked about the Durban. Yeah. You call me fucking Durban and you want an 888. <laughs> There's no chance that's happening. I'll give him a six six point eight eight. How about a six point seven eight? That's pretty. That's pretty good though. I mean, that's that's one of those ones when it happens to you, you're like, how does this happen? It came to eight eighty eight, and he won a lottery. He bought the lottery ticket when that happened because he's like, that just happened, and I won, and he won eighty eight on the lottery ticket. I mean, how can that be possible? It's beyond any kind of chance or anything like that. I mean, it just... You should have bought 88 lottery tickets. You should have. Then he would have won Jack. Hey, Siri, what's 88 times 88? 88 times 88 is 7,744. That's still not a lot of money. Big risk. 
What do you think 88 lottery tickets cost? That's probably, you're into the hundreds of dollars if you lose. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'll give them a seven. Come on. Okay, an eight. eight flat eight is okay. A flat eight. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You just really needed an eight there. Eh? You were going to let me go. What else you got? I got the UFO quotes of the week. Do that. The non profound UFO quote of the week. You got to yeah. speak up. Over there, I got the, I'm you seem like whispering in purpose. Are you in purpose? <laughs> <laughs> Down and Graham going deep. It's a profound UFO quote of a week. Words to ponder and critique. It's a profound UFO quote of the week. That's probably my favorite jingle. I like all the UFO quote jingles. Actually. I think Durbin's from a show, Bewitched. No. That's what our, our from, rhyme from Kansas That's says. Darren, his name. And they call him Durbin. Oh, really? That, that's hilarious. Yeah. Bewitched. Oh, and it's an episode for with a witch. Oh, my God. Does that not make it a compound synchro? <laughs> a hey, compound. come on. <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. I gave it an eight. What are the chances? I already compounded it. What are the chances This that I picked that out? It's an old email, and I pick it out for this witch episode. What's the date? August 18th. <laughs> <laughs> eight. Eight is August. <laughs> eight, 18, 18. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, it's August 26th. Oh. <gasps> Two plus six is eight. <laughs> <laughs> it's no. 826. I'm not changing it. it it's 826. <laughs> eight and two plus six equals eight. eight. It can't get any better than that. It can't. It can. Was that eight weeks ago? No. How, how are you holding on to emails that long? Dude, I've got emails from years ago I'm saving up. Really? Yeah, of course. That's a, that's kind of rude. What do you mean? It's someone's just waiting, waiting for the. Well, I can't get them all. There's, it's impossible to read them all. So. Some people are old. September, October. It is no, it's not. No, it's no, not it's even not, close. Come months, on, it's almost fucking Christmas. Away. Three months away. Okay. I gave him an eight. Not going any higher. You can keep care. compounding. Whatever. If you want to just ignore the compoundness of these. Bewitched? Totally I don't even know if I, just... I, I, I can't up it on Ryan from Kansas as a source. It doesn't matter. He came up with it. Well, he, I know even you the... two could be colluding. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Ryan could be trolling right now. Yeah. So he's trolling in the chats right now, probably, right? Which is another thing we should talk to the people from America. Right? Chats. Yeah. No, it's not where he's trolling. He's trolling the YouTube chats. Okay. But the anyways, show. there is a perpetual chats going on in the Discord. And he'll fucking troll you there, and too. You can just slash the chats and go there. And uh, yeah, it's super fun. There's lots of categories. Actually, you can send stories and synchros and stuff in there too. I think is there a channel, a special channel for all these categories? We should make sure in that chats, that happens. Yeah. yeah. And there's on the website. There's places to submit all that stuff. America.ca. Here we go. I got one for you. I'm in the middle bingo, of the UFO call. <laughs> <laughs> Did we not get I just that? realized you just bypassed the whole UFO quote. <laughs> get to it. Okay. Oh, now my glasses are all foggy. That's good. I need new glasses. These are just reading glasses and they're really hard to... That's good. You've been triggered all day, so a good laugh is good for you. This is the first sighting in Zimbabwe where airborne pilots have tried to intercept a UFO. As far as my air staff is concerned... We believe implicitly that the unidentified UFOs are from civilizations beyond our planet. That was Air Commodore David Thorne, Director of General Operations for the Zimbabwe Air Force in 1985. Zimbabwe Air Force. And when? 1985. Huh. I'll, I'll, I'll pound out a couple other ones here. UFOs sighted in Indonesia are identical with those sighted in other countries. Sometimes they pose a problem for our air defense, and once we were obliged to fire upon them. I think I've read that one before. That's from Air Marshal Nurjadin Roseman, Commander-in-Chief of Indonesian Air Force 1967. 
People liked my Huxley quote. You want to do one more? Go ahead. <clears throat> UFOs are real, and they may come from outer space. That was General Kenshi Ishikawa, Chief of Air Staff, 1967. Here's a quote for you. Are you done? No, one more. Okay, fine. You're just pounding out profound quotes today. No, you, you know, I'm just following the desire of the listeners and my co-host. I'm just sick of the UFO quotes after five years. And they've served their purpose. Oh, looks like I might be... Uh, oh. Just about. Oh, now here we go. Oh, this guy. We should get this guy on the show one day. Let's I do was it. a top secret control officer. Oh, boy. I happened to see a classified message go through my comm communication center, which said, if you... Uh, a UFO has crashed on the island of Spitsbergen, Norway, and a team of scientists are coming to investigate it. That was U U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dwayne Arneson. Yeah. I don't know what the date was. That's my turn for my, okay. for my random Go. quote of the week. Yeah. Last week I did Huxley. This week I'm going to do it, and you have to oh, try no. and guess who you it is. You didn't. That wasn't a good quote at all. No? Okay, here's this one. Okay. I have a foreboding of an America in my children's or grandchildren's time when the United States is a service and information economy when nearly all the manufacturing industries have slipped away to other countries, when awesome technological powers are in the hands of a very few and no one representing the public interest can even grasp the issues, when the people have lost the ability to set their own agendas or knowledgeably question those in authority. When clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes, horoscopes, <laughs> our critical faculties in decline, unable to distinguish what feels good and what's true, we slide almost without noticing back into superstition and darkness. The dumbing down of America is most evident in the slow decay of the substantive content in the enormously influential media, the 30-second sound bites, lowest common denominator programming, credulous presentations presentations on pseudoscience and superstition but especially a kind of celebration of ignorance jesus who is that carl sagan yeah how'd you get it what do you mean was it his quote or was it my it was your accent was it <laughs> yes no i could i would have got it anyways would you well you know what i didn't think he would be i didn't think he was that into the dumbing down of the people like that did it's sound very read so i think it did that's sound like, very uh, conspiratorial actually it, it sounds was, super conspiratorial yeah, yeah. I wonder what, it doesn't say what date he said that, but he's been dead for a long time, so it was a while ago. Yeah, that's what I mean. It seems very, oof. I think he was, he was woke more than people give him credit for. Woke? But he was bought out, too. He was bought <laughs> out and woke. He got woke then, he got bought out? Yeah, that's usually how it happens. Oh, no, I guess it doesn't. I guess, yeah, that's how it happens. Ain't as bought out as Neil fucking DeGrasse Tyson. And that's right. Jesus Christ. Okay, back to you. Oh, actually, right. no, back it was to me. A, how, about, how about one more? What? Are you kidding me? You can't do six <laughs> profound quotes. That you've just lost all profoundness. Okay, I'll save them. There's a bunch more still, so, you know, I'm just going to drag it on longer if you want. That's fine. People are going to cry when it's done. Okay. But if I replace well, we're going to replace them with great something else, I'm, other quotes. And I'm doing great impressions. Questionable impressions at best. So what were you doing now? <laughs> Oh, here's a fun one. America. So, confession time. Grammarica isn't a word. We made it up. What does Grammarica mean to you? Let's see. So you have some interesting answers. From Lee Smith, two cool dudes chatting about awesome subjects. From Joshua, I look at it like Grim plus America because there has been many grim things going on behind the scenes and you help open up many discussions about these things. 
from Justin. It's a fictional nation run by you guys where anything and everything weird converges, like a tiny island in the middle of some lake deep in the Canadian wilderness. Nice. From Joseph, a meeting place for powerful minds to meld ideas without fear. Awesome. That is a good one. So from, all those are all good. From Trevor. Hey, Grimer- stop now while you're ahead. Grimerica is a place where all welcome to hang where all are welcome to hang out with like minded people and just enjoy good, interesting conversation. Have a few laughs and take your mind off the mundane. It's a place that makes a quest for knowledge fun and entertaining. Grimerica is a place that is needed in this world more than ever. Thanks for Aww. doing what you do, guys. Keep it up. Aww. From Stevie McFadden. Is Stevie the one who got married on the show? Um, Stevie Or Levy? got in great, engaged on Stevie the show? Stevie Stevie McFadden. I don't know. Anyway, UFO quotes, not just normal ones. You profound. could say they are profound. <laughs> From Nick, I've never understood the name. From Forrest, Forrest Neal, guest on the show, guest turned fan. The land of misfit toys. <laughs> That's a good one. From Brett, I thought it was both your names together, but I've just listened to a tinfoil hat episode, and now I know it's drunken poker plus laziness. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good like go-to when people ask, is yeah. drunken poker plus laziness. But yeah. then they're going to inevitably ask you to elaborate. Uh, grimy America, Grim for Gram, equals Gram America. And I think it of as grimy... In America, uncovering the truth below the grind. All right, on. Yep, head over to the Facebook page, guys. Give us a like over. Here's the thing: we're starting to think some of these algos. So it would help us out, I think, if you guys went and like liked us on the stuff. You know, like especially the YouTube right now. If a lot of people don't listen to you on the YouTube page, we get that. But if you're on YouTube anyway, head over to the Grime America channel. Give us a subscribe. Yeah, good Because I think it'll help people find us if we have more subscribers. That's right, yeah. Subscribe yep. to us on iTunes because if that helps us out in the iTunes store. Leave review us a, it even, yeah. a review. Leave us a rating. Grimerica.ca slash iTunes will take you to do that. Anything you can, any place you can review us, subscribe to us, or like us. Even if you never go back to that fucking place again, it helps. you still triggered the algo. Yeah. So you could well, be hopefully you could be the one you that could triggered be, it. Yeah, could you could be, be helping one. the show while you're waiting for your doctor's appointment. Yeah. It's another you, way. You could be you could be the, you know, the fiftieth person in PayPal that triggers the shutdown of PayPal. You could or be the hundredth monkey. You know, the ten thousandth YouTube subscriber that triggers uh some new Alt right Graham getting banned. Yeah, some new banning. Yeah. So that um, was one of the, the Twitter responses. Is, what does Graham America mean to you? Alt right. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing you left that out. Yeah. Could be left too. We could be left. You go wherever the money is. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that, if you want to sign up via PayPal, which is, you know, one of the one of the ways that used to be okay, and we're still going to have that available, but it's got to happen in the next couple of days, like by December first. Otherwise, please, because we need your help. Otherwise, we can't do this. Go to slash patreon or, or Stripe. Stripe or is stri- coming up. Stripe's not next. set up. It'll be set up next week. Like I say, we're going to probably figure out a way to eventually to have Stripe and PayPal both as an option. But uh, for now, we could use some more patrons for sure. We don't even have 100 fucking patrons. Get over there. Sign up for a patron. If you're a PayPal person, get on the PayPal. Of course, we got Stripe. The bottom line is that without support, you know, one of these hits is going to end up taking us down. So we need to prepare. I mean, Carl Wood said it well when he said we can weather any storm if we're prepared. But right now we're sort of living check to check in Great America. And sometimes not even check to check. Sometimes it goes into our bank accounts, like often. So it would help out if, you know, we could get to the point where we can be prepared for. You mean comes out of our bank account? Yeah, that's what I mean. When the PayPal is empty, (laughs) not goes in, no. So it's like, you know, we're still living check to check barely. And we need to get to the point where we can save enough money that. You know, PayPal going down, we've got a bit of money to pay bills while we're Exactly. Yeah. And we don't want ads, we don't want sponsors out. and all that. Like we've we've said we want to do value for value. So that means that we're not beholden to any anybody sponsoring, anybody, you know, paying us to advertise our stuff. We can talk about whatever the hell we want with the guests who we want. And we don't have to wait you guys don't have to wait for ads or anything like that. Just our little lazy ramblings here to explain why we need your help. And that's it. And we got the black budget feed, which oh, is pumping up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we're Darren, ramping that well, up. we should talk about, wait, did you talk about what you're reading? No. 
I haven't. Have you put it out yet? The first episode of that? Yes. Of the manifesto? Everything's out. The ma- every, really? I put the black budget out stuff almost as quickly as you record it. Oh, wow. That's Plus, it was it. coming up on the end of the month, so I right, wanted to right. maximize the libs. Okay, and so so we've got a couple essays. We did a keel. I did a keel essay uh, when you talked about UFOs to the Scientific uh, UFO Congress in uh, 1967. Yeah. And you did a couple? Yeah, well, I did I did the Dave McGowan, part one, September 11th, and revisited a prologue, which was written the September 12th, 2001, the day after, and uh, it's quite pertinent. And, of course, I think we'll do part two right away, and I also did the first. I wish I would have done it in, like, six parts, but I've now committed to four parts. You can still split it up. It's okay. It takes a while. I already I put one of four in the title. Oh, did you? That's, yeah. it. That's it. I ain't rolling back on this mm-hmm. shit, man. I said I'd do it. I'll and do that's it. That's the manifesto itself, right? That's uh, Professor Ted, the Unabomber's manifesto. Reading through that paragraph by paragraph, we got through the first fifty-nine paragraphs in uh, episode one. Yeah. So grammarca.ca slash support. As soon as you go there and sign up, you'll get an email. It'll have the link. You go to Patreon. The link's there. If you're a supporter, just go to one of the posts. Has the link there. If you if you have any trouble finding that shit, just email me or Graham, and we'll get you set up. I think we're going to do an episode with all listener trip reports too. I've been saving up some trip reports because some of them are quite long. So. Yeah, Save that up for some, like one big black budget episode. Some political some conspiracy cool. stuff coming up in the black budget, some more essays and yeah, the black budget probably going at least two episodes a month. Right now I think we're we're on a one a week pace right now. I don't know how long we can keep that up, but uh better time than ever. Sub- subscriptions are going down and content's going up. What the fuck? Maybe that's a problem. We're releasing too much content. We gotta pull no, back. No, it's all good. It's all good. We don't care. We love you. Yeah. We love you. Thanks for listening. We love it. We hope you guys Love this chat about witches with Ellen Everett, not Everett, Everett Hopman. kind of got an appropriate halloweeny type episode with ellen hopman she's a herbalist and she teaches druidism and herbal lore tree lore she's got a whole bunch of books out um tree what was the other one i was reading tree healing tree something i can't remember it now and the latest one real witches of of new england um yeah thanks for coming on the show ellen well thank you very much for inviting me it's an honor to speak to canadians different country lots of trees up here yeah tree medicine tree magic sorry i kind of messed up that uh that intro there there's no trees that was my first book tree medicine tree magic yeah. awesome yeah you've got like 10 out i think 15 actually. 15 now oh my god yeah that was a few years ago when i was listening to that to you but they're to not all show. out yet i'm i'm writing one right now and there's one coming out next summer so <laughs> Well, thanks. I, I, I can't help it. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us in this special time. The last, it's funny, I listened to you on an interview uh, a few days ago, and it was the same time of the year as well. It was before, uh, just before Halloween. So there's a lot of overarching things we could talk about, you know, like paganism and, and witches and Druidism and the holidays, like Halloween and the, uh, the one on the other side of the year. But uh, maybe we should start so we don't uh, we don't miss out anything on the re- the real witches of New England, which is kind of a little more detailed and Halloweeny. Do you want to start with the uh, genesis of that book? Well, basically, um, I went to a poetry reading in Wendell, Massachusetts, and um, there was a poet there, Mike Mowry, and he was reading a poem about Mary Webster, the witch of Hadley. And I was working in Hadley at the time, and I had no idea that there was a witch of Hadley. That was news to me. 
and I've lived here for 30 years in this area. Um, and the poem is actually, she's called Half-Hanged Mary, the Witch of Hadley. Ugh. And there's a whole story there. Uh, but, but so I was just blown away by that. I had no idea because I've been a pagan since the early 80s, and nobody talks about this stuff. And then, so I, so I looked into Mary, I looked into Half-Hanged Mary, and then I went to visit her grave, which I tried to find, and I couldn't find it. Um, her graveyard was about five minutes from my place of work, uh, 17 minutes from the house. So I was walking up and down the gravestones trying to figure out which one was hers, and I did find one stone that was defaced, and I kind of wonder if that was hers, mm. but there was a big oak tree in the cemetery, so I asked the oak tree to please send my good wishes to Mary, uh, because I couldn't find her, and I left a rose. I had brought a rose with me that I was going to leave at her grave, but um, I left it under the tree and asked the tree to communicate with her if it could. So anyway, I kept going. Um, That's just the way my mind works. When When I get a question in my head... That's often how books happen, you know. It takes me a few years to write a book, so I have to be pretty interested in the subject. And um, the more I looked into it, then I found out that there was a witch of Northampton. Northampton's 45 minutes from my house. Then I found out there was a witch of Springfield. Springfield is 45 minutes from my house. And I just said, holy cow, you know. (laughs) And I just kept looking. And then I said, well, gee whiz, um, this is a pretty miserable uh, situation here in New England, you know, the Salem witch trials and all that. And I said, I wonder why that happened. So I started digging into it. Mm -hmm. So then, um, I started looking into the history, um, what happened in Europe. And then I went even further back and I took it all the way back to the bronze age. So the book really starts with the old Testament and the bronze age. And then works through everything that happened in Europe and then Salem and then um, I started interviewing descendants of the accused witches, and then I started interviewing modern witches. So that's all in the book. Nice. We've had we've had so many authors on the show that that have like a a download or or a inspiration for a book, and it kind of changes their whole path, or they, you know, they all of a sudden start writing, writing these things. I mean, do you, do you attribute any of your writing to that kind of thing? Like just your connection to uh, the spirit realm or whatever nature, or whatever um, that you get, you know, this sort of download or this idea to have to, to write this book at this time, which is obviously it's a pretty good time for a book like this as well with uh, all the, all the interest in, you know, the revival of paganism and, and interest in magic and witches. Well, Really, I I wasn't really thinking that way with this one. It was more personal curiosity. Um, I have had books that, for example, my novels, I have three novels out. It's a trilogy of Iron Age Druid novels. And mm-hmm. when I was writing those, I honestly felt like, you know, people said, oh, that's not fair, you channeled the books, you know. <laughs> but, I, I mean, I honestly felt like the characters in the books were actually speaking through me. That was an interesting experience. <laughs> it, was, um, it was like being on a shamanic journey for years, which is exhausting. Um, but I would literally sit in front of the computer with no idea, you know, what was going to happen next. And then pretty soon the characters would start talking, and all I was doing was following them around and recording what they were saying and what they were doing. And that's how those were written. Mm. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I, as I wrote this book, I mean, I, I, the book came out September 18th, but the, the actual book I had in my hands in August of this year, um, there's a lot going on in the world now that I see, you know, I see very strong parallels. So... To, yeah. to what to what, what age to what to what parallels to what age like how far would you go back to for those parallels well if like you look to at the bronze the, age like no this is a big big <laughs> this is a huge subject um yeah the bronze age uh it wasn't too nice the, if you go to the old testament look at ezekiel jeremiah uh you find quotes in there about witches although 
a lot of people think they weren't actually talking about witches. They were talking about poisoners. But King James, who was very paranoid and terrified of witches, uh, changed the word to witch. But the, the Old Testament is very against goddess worship, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, so Exodus says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And then uh, Leviticus says, a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, and their blood shall be upon them. So th- we're talking about 1400 B.C. And then if you look at Jeremiah, the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire and the women knead the dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. And this is Yahweh complaining because people are, women in particular, are making offerings to the goddess Asherah and also other gods because the Canaanites were polytheists. They had goddesses and gods. And um, if you look, at, you know, I looked into Yahweh at one point. Yahweh was originally a minor deity. He was a, he was a cupbearer. That was his function. Um, so anyway, and then also Jeremiah answered the women, when we were burning sacrifices to the Queen of Heaven and were pouring out libations to her, was it without our husbands that we made for her sacrificial cakes in her image and poured out libations to her? Um, so there was goddess worshiping, worship going on uh, 1400 B.C. and long before that as well. Mm. And so the Old Testament, if you read it, and I find that an awful lot of people, especially people who call themselves Christians, haven't read the Bible, because if they read the Bible, they would probably be surprised. But the Old Testament is loaded with um, misogynist writing, you know, like the worst disaster that can happen to a man is to give birth to a daughter. That's in Proverbs. You know, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, the... As far as, I mean, boy, this is a very complicated subject, but it started out like that. Um, You had this high temple, monotheist, patriarchal, male-centered sect that was trying to gain power, and they were in an area where the people were polytheist, goddess-worshipping. The goddess was named Asherah, if anyone's interested. And um, so they did what most religions do, which is they demonized the religion that came before. So this patriarchal Hebrew high temple religion was demonizing um, the goddess worshipers who honored the feminine aspect of deity. And uh, so that went on. And then Jesus came along, and his teachings are pretty nice. He hung out with women and um, street people and lepers, and, you know, he didn't care. So for a thousand years, um, after Christianity came in, for about a thousand years, things were okay. Uh, St. Augustine wrote that anybody who believes in witches is deluded, witches have no power, only God has power, therefore it's wrong to believe in witches. So people just didn't think about witches. Um, so when you say it was, so, uh, things were okay, they were okay in, in context of of witches. Witches. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, and, the world's going through the dark ages and uh, all this other kinds of yeah. stuff. I think. Yeah. Other 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 traumatic global events at the time, but witches were okay for a few right. a few years. Yeah, witches, well, what happened was um, the the Y one K phenomenon. Do you remember Y two K when the year? Okay, and do you remember how everybody was terrified and they thought that civilization was going to come crashing to a halt and people started hoarding food and hoarding water and, you know, the survivalists got all upset and everybody thought that civilization was just going to be over, right? Um, Because the computers were going to crash and all that. Well, the exact same thing happened in the year 1000 when the calendar turned over from the year 999 to the year 1000 Everybody was terrified. Um, They just thought the world was going to end, literally. 
and they didn't have computers. But what they were terrified of at that time was devils. So the idea that the devil or Satan was going to show up in your living room, you know, and take you to hell or something, um, that first started when they had the Y1K hysteria. That's so, so, I mean, when, when, things, when I read things like that, that's when it dawned on me that people haven't changed very much, you know? I mean, it's just the parallels are just astounding. But anyway, so... So do you, you think that that, that, that devil phenomenon, you think that showed up around that time, or is that what you said? Yeah, that, yeah people weren't really... Because before that, they were, everybody was thinking, oh, God is the only one that has power. God is almighty. God has power. All of a sudden, now they're afraid of this entity called the devil. Um, I mean, if God is so powerful, why is the devil such a threat? I don't know. But anyway, so they. I w- but I would so have thought were, that I would have thought that would have went back to like uh, incubus and succubus encounters and uh, near death experiences and stuff like that, where people must have been having those going way back. Yeah, but that stuff really got ramped up in the Middle Ages. See that there's really three phases to all this. I, I, when I say the first thousand years were not that bad in terms of witches, um, I'm telling you that's what it was like. And then after the Y1K, uh-huh. when they were so terrified of demons and devils, mm-hmm. um, then they started thinking about people that consort with demons and devils, mm-hmm. and these must be very powerful people, and therefore they must be men, because only men are smart and only men are educated. So they didn't think in terms, you know, we think in, in terms, uh, we have a, a folk idea of the witch as this old woman. That's not the way they thought of it. They thought of them as powerful men, wizards, um, you know, maguses, mm-hmm. uh, magi, whatever the word is. Um, that's what they thought. And that went on for four centuries that, you know, these powerful magical practitioners must be men. And then um, in the year 1475, Jakob Nieder wrote a book called Formicarius, and this was right when the Gutenberg Press was invented. So they had this new technology where if somebody had an idea, they could put it into a book, and then the book would be shipped all over the place and the idea would spread. Because remember, before the the press, it was pretty hard to get ideas to spread. Mm -hmm. You know, So all of a sudden he writes this book, and he says... No, women are stupid, women are uneducated, women are gullible, women are more likely to be led by the devil, they're more susceptible to demons and all that. This is what he argued. Therefore, witches must be women. And that's where that started. And then the Holocaust of women began after that. And then a lot of that, I mean, it was funny, we were just talking at the beginning, before the show, and... It's like every time you hear about these these accounts of witches, you're, you're like, that wasn't even a witch, you know? They weren't even witches. I mean, there must have been a lot of what do you what do you how do you say it? Like people just getting getting uh, killed for nothing. Not that I mean, not that there's any you know reasonable reason for that, but it depends on what you mean by the word witch. See, that's the problem. This is a huge subject. Um, I mean, there were all kinds of things going on. The medical profession was just getting started, and they were all men. The people that had been the healers that had been taking care of the sick for two million years, probably, Mm -hmm. uh, were the grandmothers. Mm -hmm. That's who the healers were. And the midwives and the herbalists. And so midwives and herbalists were labeled witches (laughs) because they were in direct competition with the male medical profession. Um, and then you had uh, property problems. If you had a, a widow, you know, women often live longer than men, but uh, a How widow you. Had, who had some land, <laughs> you know, some property, and her, her, the younger people in her family couldn't wait for her to die, uh, it would be very convenient to accuse her of being a witch and get rid of her so they could take the property. I mean, there when you really dig down into the individual stories, there's just a lot. Um, if somebody was very good looking, that happened. The witch of Northampton uh, in my area, her pro- the reason she was accused of being a witch was because she was good looking, she was intelligent, 
and her children didn't die, but all her neighbor's children were dying. They were getting sick and dying, and therefore she must be a witch, you know. How I mean, many women do you think we're talking? Um, well, there's different estimates. Very hard to tell uh, because, you know, a lot went on. But I, I've seen anywhere from 40,000, that was the lowest number. The highest number I ever saw was 300,000. But if you consider, uh, you know, one person, if you hang one person or burn one person to death, uh, that's going to pacify a lot of people. You know, everybody's going to hear about it. And it was a way of controlling people, also a way of controlling the population. And that was both the, the church and the nobles, the nobility and the kings and queens. You know, they were always trying to figure out how to control people. And that's a great way to do it. But they weren't just burning women. They were also going after men, mostly women, but also men, also children also Jews, also anybody they considered a heretic, um, Cathars, Waldensians, Protestants in Catholic countries, Catholics in Protestant countries. Uh, they, were, they were just going after anybody that they thought was different. And, you know, Canada is a pretty peaceful place, but right now in the United States we have a lot going on. And... <laughs> I mean, I see a lot of parallels between what's happening here. Well, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, we, you know, the States was founded on freedom and, and the, you know, since when, when are we talking about all these modern witches that, that you're, you're talking about? Is that the, like, what kind of date range are we talking about? And then, and then the parallels you talk about, I mean, it, we can almost practice or, or preach whatever you want now in the Western world. So how it, it must be way better than it used to be in that regard. Sort of. Uh, depends where you are. If you're in the Bible Belt of the United States, um, Tennessee, you know, if you're if you're in the Bible Belt, you can't preach whatever you want. They still have book burnings. When the Harry Potter books came out, uh, the preachers were organizing book burnings. And um, just last weekend, there was a group of Druids trying to do a ritual. Um, I believe it was either Kentucky or Tennessee. I always get them mixed up. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they were they were in the Bible Belt, and they were getting death threats because they were doing a ritual, and they were trying to do it in the open. You know, in the the local people were saying that they were. Attra- and this sounds so medieval, but they were literally saying, by doing that, you're bringing demons and devils into our town. Wow. Well, not only that, you got all this new age of tearing down YouTube channels yeah, digital book and burning. deplatforming people and cutting off their payment sources. I mean, you don't need to physically burn books to shut people up nowadays. You just need to cancel their their PayPal. Their PayPal or their YouTube channel. I mean, that in a lot of ways seems to be the modern version of book burning. Well, that's better than killing people. True that. Yeah, I suppose burning books is better than killing people too. But uh <laughs> It's a slippery slope. I mean, we we just had a terrible thing happen here. I mean, I've been I've been doing interviews about this book for about a month and a half, and every interview mm-hmm. I've been saying the same thing. You know that that I see all these parallels, and and just because people are okay with witches now, because Harry Potter is cute and. <laughs> Um, Charmed is is cute, and it's a bunch of teenage witches, and Bewitched was cute. Um, we're you know that we're in this nice little period, and I and I've been saying things could shift at any time, and we just had a slaughter of Jews uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Jews, of course, were the classic uh, people that were being persecuted. It wasn't just witches, you know. Yeah, it was always. I mean, we're still living with it. it. I mean, at least in this country, we are. I don't know what's going on in Canada, but well, there's well, different, different things going here. on in Canada. But I mean, it's social justice that's the new problem, right? It's less, it's less about about gun violence and more about uh, it's more like about what you say. Like we can't say a lot in Canada as, as compared to the states. I mean, that might change. I don't know, but but. Um, it's 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 a bit different. It's hard, it's hard to compare, but but I think there's another reason why 
paganism, let's say, or, or magic or witches or whatever you want is getting more popular. It's not just because of the, like what you mentioned, which is, which is part of it, the pop culture part of it, the Harry Potter and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's yeah. also because religion isn't working for a lot of people. It's been ruined by the institutionalization of it. I mean, the whole spiritual aspect of it, there's, there's not really much left of that. And the materialism is on the other side. That's, that's an extremism in itself. I mean, just the, the, the lack of uh, acceptance to any kind of evidence that tells us that, uh, that there's a spiritual realm or that we can be connected to something greater than ourselves. I mean, there's, so there's, there's gotta be, so I think people are being attracted to this middle, middle part and um, paganism is probably a big part of that. Well, Whether they know I it or not. I mean, they might not even label it or even know, but people getting back to I, nature and people meditating and connecting to uh, herbs, you know, the essential sort of the oils age kind of thing is kind of part of that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I was just in Ireland this summer um, in May, and um, I was on a farm in Ireland for about a week, and then I was traveling around for a few weeks. And it was right before they had the big abortion referendum. And Ireland was always considered the most Catholic country in the world, practically, you know, Irish Catholics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, 5% of Irish people go to church now. Mm -hmm. 5%. Yeah. And... The pedophile uh, situation had a lot to do with it. People were so just shocked, uh, disappointed, disgusted, you know, by that. So they, you know, I, I, I was fortunate that I was actually, you know, with Irish people. I wasn't traveling around with Americans. It was great to be with the Irish. So I, I did get to um, discuss this a little bit. And what I saw, and it was very touching to me, because I'm a Druid, and Druidism is, you know, their ancient pagan religion. Uh, it's the Celtic religion. It's the Celtic path. And what I saw was, here are these people. They're still so devoted and humble in the face of spirit and um, wanting to worship. You know, they still have holy wells, and uh, they still have their saints, and they still have all this stuff going on in the house, um, they just can't stand the church, right? So what they're doing now is they're taking all of that beautiful sense of devotion that they have, and Druidism is coming back. Mm -hmm. Big fire festivals. uh, I mean, it was really something. For me to see that, it was amazing. Yeah, especially after you've been in it since the... The 90s, early 90s, I think I heard you say. And, and early 80s. Early 80s, in- yeah. And, you know, and now to see this revival must be quite interesting. Yeah, and, and in the country where it, it's indigenous, what it is is it's the old pre-Christian indigenous tradition, mm-hmm. which I have just total respect for, you know. It's like, that's my tradition, it's my religion, you know. But um, I think they they're just newly realizing what they've got, yeah. you know, and 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 they you know they've suffered. They they went through the whole colonial period, and and this is just another way for Ireland to come out from under that whole colonial nightmare that went on. I think I interrupted you when I mentioned when I mentioned that my thoughts on what one of the re, what some of the reasons why paganism is is growing. What what was the point you were trying to get at before I interrupted you? Well, I just said it. Oh, was it the same thing? Okay. Yeah, I was just going to talk about Ireland, you know, what I just witnessed in Ireland, which the most Catholic of countries, you know, they're turning back to Druidism, which is just amazing to me. And very positive because, um, you know, it it brings back your self-esteem. If you're a country that's been colonized and you can get back to your indigenous roots, it really gives you a sense of pride and purpose, and um, it, I think it's re- very healing. That's what I think. I wonder if that works as well for the people in the USA, if they're like, their indigenous land is a little more sketchy of a... <laughs> well, we don't have... The, <laughs> the indigenous religion here is the Native American religion, and... 
if you try to get into the Native American religion, or there's many different Native American religions, but most Native American people don't appreciate that. They don't want us to be into their religion. That's, you know, there are some, I've met some fantastic elders, um, especially in Canada. Grandfather Commanda was this wonderful Native American spiritual leader who always said the white, the black, the red, and the yellow have to work together. And, I mean, he was profound. But not everybody's like that. Um, most of them resent it deeply. So what's an American to do, you know? So then what we do, at least in the pagan community, often is we look back into our own ancestry and uh, try to honor our ancestral pre-Christian roots um, and then some people don't, they, they feel very attracted to the ancestral religion of some other tradition, like a, a person of Italian heritage might feel drawn to the Norse Viking tradition or something, you know. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Americans are kind of adrift uh, because we, we aren't, we, we're not accepted by the indigenous people here. Um, because we are settlers, colonizers, <laughs> invaders, we are, and we came from Europe. And uh, boy, this is a complicated subject. <laughs> no doubt. <dead. laughs> <I don't wanna laughs> so, what was the time frame of the the witches from New England, like the, where that that whole thing happened? So, are we talking about when just were people like, like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, and like the last couple enough. hundred years, like from like the. Uh, yeah, it started in the 1640s, roughly. Um, the first accused witch was actually in Springfield, Massachusetts, not Salem. Everybody thinks Salem, Salem, Salem. But Salem, no. Salem was actually the end of the whole thing. Oh. Um, so uh, by the time Salem happened, everybody was so horrified and disgusted by that episode, people were ashamed, and um, very quickly the families were gi were given um, reparations because everybody felt really bad about it, and the whole thing stopped. Um, you know, they killed a bunch of people, and then everybody said, "This is awful," and it finally came to a stop. But it was there were over three hundred accused witches. Uh, just in the New England area. Wow. Yeah. Is there what? So when was the when was like uh, the last witch? When was the last witch burned or thrown off the cliff or whatever happened? Because I mean, I drove by through Salem, Oregon, and they seem to have some heritage there, and that must not have been like when did when were people living in Oregon? It must have been a whole lot later. No, no, that that, that <laughs> Salem, Oregon is three thousand miles away. That has. That's not, that's not part of it. But um, they didn't move like but, they didn't get some of that from moving over. Like that wasn't named after the eastern town. Oh, well, maybe it was, but I mean, I okay, I'm ignorant. No, I've no, never heard I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious because Darren definitely <laughs> there was like, a there was a yeah. witch museum there. That's why. Yeah, yeah. It's, so they're either just. Using, wait, using a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a witch museum in Salem, Oregon? <laughs> yeah, we were going to go check it out. Me and my buddy were... You and your uh, witchy wife? No, no, it was me and me and Kyle were down there. Oh. We were, like, looking for wow. things to do. We were okay, like, okay, so maybe somebody from Salem... The th see, the thing... Oh, boy. The thing is, none of this happened in Salem. It, it actually happened in a different town. The town is called Danvers now, but it was Salem Village back in the day, mm -hmm. the, the place known as Salem now, where all the witches go, is nothing but a commercial area. There's like all these witch shops, and people go crazy buying things. <laughs> it's a big tourist attraction, <laughs> and not, it didn't happen there. That wasn't even where it happened. So... So that's the same There's thing, just carried on to the West. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's so in, the commercialization of everything, you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. The name of the All town right. is so, Salem, uh, so they're like, let's go for yeah, it. Yeah, let's go for it, yeah. We need a witch museum, a gift oh, shop. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you could you could have a Salem, uh, Ohio, and you could have witch shops, and everybody would probably go there, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a big commercial thing. 
But the the last witch in the West. So wait, here's something witch. interesting. What? As soon as I started typing in Salem, Oregon. So if I type Salem, yeah. Oregon into yeah. YouTube, the first okay. thing that pops up is Salem, Oregon witch trials. Huh? What? <laughs> so now th- this is something I'd never heard of. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'll have to look into it. It'll be your next book. It'll be like the Witches of the West. Wait, when did that happen? When did the Salem, Oregon witch trials happen? So I'm click. I'm just going through the Wikipedia here now. Just, just uh, mm-hmm, bear with me. Timeline. Salem Village, 1692. So that's not going to be in Oregon. No, that's that's in Massachusetts. <laughs> That was Massachusetts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep thing digging was, down the fake, thing. It's fake news, Darren. Something like that. No, it can't be. Too many buttons are <laughs> clicking here. You guys carry on. I'm gonna go down. So, the... what was the last witch of the West you were about to say? Okay, the last witch that I know of in the West who was burned as a, or killed as a witch was 1997 in Russia. Wow. But but the witch burnings are going on right now in Africa. And uh, Saudi Arabia is beheading witches. So the, the witch persecutions are still happening. And, I mean, that's just another reason why I feel like things could turn on a dime. You know, yeah, yeah. right now in the United States, I don't know what's going on in Canada, but in the United States we have um, a person in the White House who's trying to get everybody all upset about immigrants and to the point where they're now sending 5,000 troops down to the border, uh, 5,000 additional troops, they already had troops down there, but they're, they're creating this whole big drama uh, because the, <laughs> a bunch of brown people are 1,000 miles away, but we have to have troops at the border. I mean, this, it's just insane. But there is a, there's a segment of the population that really feels... Uh, like they're under threat. Like, <laughs> should they just open the borders? I mean, should they just have no borders? That's that's no, the, that's what the but that's what they're sort of pushing against, right? I mean, it's uh... nobody is advocating for just opening the borders. That's oh, what I, the, I think they are. <laughs> the Republicans, the Republicans are claiming that Democrats just want to open the borders. That's not true. No, but. A, the UN, Grams, the UN, Grams no, I'm, no, I'm not. Uh, the I'm Canadian. The <laughs> the UN and uh, and some other organizations are. I would probably argue that they're not so uh, on a lighter innocent, note, innocent on this. You know why Salem? Or, when no, you type in Salem, Oregon, witch trials comes up. It's not illegal to be a refugee. It's not illegal to be an asylum seeker. Oh yeah, totally. And, and in that sense, if you come to the border and you are a refugee or an asylum seeker, it's not illegal, and you should be let in. But that doesn't mean open borders. It just means that people with a legitimate reason to come here should come here. You know, people that are in real dire straits. There, you know, there are places in the Middle East that have taken a million refugees. Um, you know... <laughs> I mean, this. Who's 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 really that? Who's to, I'm not, uh, so it turns out um, that Jordan, Jordan, you can look it up if you got a computer there. Look up how many refugees are in Jordan right now because of the wars. The king of Jordan just keeps taking refugees, and and yet the United States, which is much bigger, much richer, much more powerful. Can't take refugees. Don't they take a million a year in the states? I think they take a million a year of immigrants. I don't know how many of those are refugees, but the people that are that they're all upset about are asylum seekers and refugees who are walking here from Honduras because they're desperately poor and they're trying to escape wars in Central America and gangs. I mean, these are people fleeing for their lives. You don't generally walk thousands of miles, you know, just on a whim. I feel these like... Are, these, they're refugees. They're, you know... 
Okay, we'll anyway. we'll leave it at that. Anyways, I feel like the whole Salem, Oregon witch trials thing is just it's a uh, 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 commercial. Uh, no, it's propaganda? just fucking that many people are idiots. I think that that many people punch it into Google that. That's you know. what it, oh maybe yeah so that's what because when I go down it further it all says no there's no it's from people asking the question yeah asking the question yeah because I've never I've never and believe me I, I I googled Salem probably a thousand times and I never saw Salem Oregon come up well enough people once. typed it in that they made a museum so <laughs> yeah we should make a museum <laughs> huh the more you know so what are some well, of the misconceptions that people have about about witches and magic from your many decades of research into all this? Well, if you read the book, uh, towards the end of the book, I'm interviewing modern witches and what they believe and what they do. And uh, what I've learned, I mean, I'm a druid. A lot of my friends are witches. I never really studied witchcraft in depth, but, you know, I talked to a lot of witches. And uh, it's basically a path to enlightenment, just like any other path. It's, it's a spiritual path. Um, instead of imagining that God is this male figure out in the ether somewhere in the sky who's going to judge you and all that kind of stuff, and you should feel guilty and whatnot. Um, witchcraft as a religion, and some of them will say it's not a religion, but to me it's a religion because they have regular holy days and they all recognize the exact same holy days, but they see the divine in all things. So if it's water, fire, earth, air, animals, trees, plants, everything has a spirit. Everything has the divine within it. So, you know, if you meditate on that enough and you live that way, recognizing the divine within all things, including <laughs> people, um, that's a way of uh, unity with the divine. It's a way of enlightenment, you know. Mm -hmm. All religions do that. If you if you dig down and really look at all religions, if they're practiced the way they're supposed to be practiced, you know, um, they pretty much all kind of go to the same place. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So then, paganism is an overarching kind of umbrella, and then underneath that would be you know Druid, Druidism, and um, Wicca, and, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of like within Christianity, you would have Baptists, Lutherans, Catholics, Orthodox. You know, you have all these different flavors of Christianity. Within paganism, which is the umbrella term, um, you have Druidism, you have witchcraft, you have Asatru, you have heathenism, um, you have even voodoo and Santeria, and, you know, it's just all this stuff going on. Um, people are have a very... Um, kind of a misconception about paganism, and that's the fault of, well, church teachings and also dictionaries. Mm -hmm. Because, and in fact, there's a group of us, we had something called the Dictionary Project, and I do, I talk about that in the book, because I interviewed one of the people that I worked with on that. And um, the, the dictionaries will say, pagan, a godless person or witch, an evil old woman. <laughs> Those were the dictionary definitions. Wow. Yeah, so we looked at that and we said, no, 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 we got to write our own definitions, and we sent them out to the various dictionary companies, and um, a group of them, I forget how many, I think about six companies, uh, accepted our definitions and added it to what they had. So now it would say, witch, an evil, ugly old woman, or uh, the practitioner of a modern nature religion, you know, it's like, um, it was just, uh, but anyway, so, so pagans, uh, the, the idea that a pagan is a godless person is absolutely wrong. It's completely backwards, because uh, paganism is diverse, uh, it's polytheist, it's, it tries to be very tolerant, um, it honors many gods, it honors many goddesses, um, and it tries to, you know, recognize them. And uh, Looks like so Wikipedia, yeah. it looks like Wikipedia's uh, got it fairly correct, I think. Did you guys, did you guys have to fix that one? Well, Wikipedia is constantly being updated. Yeah. I mean, when we 
did this, it was almost 20 years ago. Oh, wow. But, yeah, anybody can go into Wikipedia and change things. So I'm sure Wikipedia is better now than it was 20 years ago. Yeah. If it, it, it was around 20 years ago, <laughs> I guess it was. I can't remember. Wicka, 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 wah. Huh. What about, like, where would, where would stuff like yoga and meditation and, like, back then, all that stuff would be considered witchcraft, I'm assuming? Yoga, no. Yoga, I mean, I'm sure there's many witches that do yoga, but yoga comes from Hinduism and the Vedic tradition. You know, that it, I mean, but, but there's a lot of, witches do do spiritual practices. I mean, meditation, yoga, things like that, definitely, but not all of them. That's the other thing. Everybody's different. It's very hard to pin down because there's no one book. There's no Bible. You know, there's no one way of doing things. There's many different flavors of, just like there's many different kinds of druids, there's many different kinds of witches. So if you ask three witches, you're going to get five different answers. Mm -hmm. So in general, though, what, what, do you, what, about, what do you guys think of, and I don't mean you guys, in a, like the druids, the pagans, what do you think of things like Sasquatch and, and the mysteries of the, you know, the forest? You know, the... Well, I mean, again, I can't answer for other people, but I have very definite ideas myself. Um, I did hang out on the west coast of the U.S. in um, Bigfoot territory, mm -hmm. and I did, I talked to... Um, and I can't remember his name, but I did talk to an indigenous Native American person out there. And um, he basically explained that Bigfoot does exist, but that it's a type of fairy. It's a spirit. So what that means is people are going to see it, but they're never going to find it. <laughs> because, and they do, the only thing they, that they do have that's, that's material is they have a horrible smell, apparently. They, they stink, okay? But what I found really interesting, I have a book out called Scottish Herbs and Fairy Lore, mm -hmm. um, which has, uh, I mean, uh, part of my family is Scottish, you know, that's why I, I did that one. And I've spent a lot of time in Scotland. But uh, there's a type of fairy called a gruagach. And, you know, I knew about the gruagach long before I knew about the, the Bigfoot. But the gruagach is described as being six foot tall, very hairy. Uh, you know, they, they talk about it as a female uh, spirit that, that takes care of the cows, but if, it, if there's a female gruagach, there must be a male gruagach somewhere also. But they're, they're described as very tall, looking like humans, but covered with hair. Hmm. So, and I, and I looked at that and I said, good grief, <laughs> that's a Sasquatch. That's, you know... Um, and again, it's a fairy. It's a type of fairy. So in Scotland, in the old days, and the same thing in Ireland, when you milked a cow, when you milked the herd, the first milk always went to the fairies. And in Scotland, it was to the gruagach. And there was a stone called the gruagach stone, or stain, um, that had a little depression in it. And you would pour the first milk, and that was polite. That was to thank this female hairy, tall figure, you know, that was taking care of your herd. Uh, she always got the first milk. So I think that's what a Sasquatch is. I think it's a gruagach. Hmm. Interesting. I don't that's think I've my, ever heard that before. A gruagach. Yeah. I like that. That's, uh, that's, that's one of the well, better I, theories I've heard. Can I shoot? Can I have heard? Can you shoot one of those? I guess not. If it's a fairy, you can't shoot a fairy. See, there's a big debate here all the time. How do you, catch, it? How do you just, catch a fairy? He doesn't mean that in an evil way or anything. Well, he just, it's just that there's a debate here because people think that the best way to, to, to save Sasquatch is to, to kill one for evidence, and then you know, then it becomes an endangered species. And, and uh, there's a debate here. I disagree completely. I think you should leave uh, him, and leave they him can't. alone. But that's my yeah, point. That, that's my point. They can't. <laughs> They live in a different dimension. They don't live in this dimention. It's like trying to shoot a little fairy, Darren. It's not How do I happen. catch a fairy? Yeah, if, I mean, they, with they blue have flowers, blue flowers they, they and blue stones. I'm not asking your opinion, Graham. <laughs> Can you catch Wait, a fairy? The fairies like blue flowers and blue stones. What are oh, you do saying? They? 
I don't trust Graham's authority on fairies. I, <laughs> I have that in my book. Are you are you reading my book? Yeah, I, I listened to some of your your work, and yeah, I remember that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That a boy. Yeah, Scottish fairy lore. I talk about that. That's their favorite color. They like blue. So I need a trail cam with some blue flowers and some blue <laughs> blue stones. Yeah. Wait for the Sasquatch. Mm. I'll throw a blue rock. Yeah, at I don't him. think so. I don't think so. The because the the Gruagach is attracted to cat, herds of cows. They they like to hang out with the cows. So that's a different thing. Ooh, because of the magic maybe mushrooms. The buffalo, maybe the moose. Maybe something like that. They that's like to hang out with the cows for the magic mushrooms. Oh, that's reindeer, isn't it? The reindeer oh. eat the magic mushrooms. <laughs> but they grow on cow patties. That's true. That's Actually, true. Right. before we wrap up, we should talk about, because our next guest, uh, we're, we're talking to another fella uh, a little later about um, his book, Psychedelic Witches, and, and he figured that um, psychedelic potions and witchcraft uh, fit together pretty well. Well, yes. Um, that's definitely part of it. Um, in the Middle Ages, um, there's something called a flying ointment, and I can't remember if I talk about it in this book. It must. I, I mean, I've written a lot of herbals. Oh, I have a book coming out in uh, the summer of 2019 called The Sacred Herbs of Samhain. Samhain is Halloween, and in there I talk about flying ointments, and I give recipes and so on. But um, the flying ointment was basically hallucinogenic herbs um, in a salve, which was probably lard-based back in the day. These days you would probably make it with beeswax and olive oil, but back then they would have used lard or butter. And uh, they would put that on their skin. And it's very interesting because they would mix soot with it and um, I thought about that. I thought, why would you put soot in there? And then I figured it out. It's because you want to know these are poisonous plants, um, henbane, you know, belladonna, things like that. Uh, you want to know exactly how much you put on your body. So by putting the black soot in there, you can measure, you know, one inch, two inch, oh. three inch. Yeah, and then you know exactly how much you put. Um, yeah, and that's how you applied it. You put it on your skin, and you apparently the, what the witches would do is they would put it on, and then they would lie down in front of the fireplace where it was nice and warm, and um, then they would take off. They would fly. On the broom? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk about that on the air. You absolutely can. Really? (laughs) Anything goes in Grimerica. Okay, well, they would take the broom handle and they would anoint the broom handle and then they would insert it in an orifice of the body and get the herbs in that way. Oh, like a a quicker quicker dilution. Yeah, quicker. um, Oh, okay. Huh. I don't think it's called a suppository. That's where the whole image of the witch riding the broom comes from. Interesting. So you just, you actually, we, he, we had Thomas on years ago and that's what he was talking about. That's, he's like the whole broom thing comes from this and we were just blown away. And this is like the first witch show we've done. So the two witch people we've talked to tend to agree on that. Interesting. That means it's like, it's fact. I'm not a witch. I'm a druid. Well, that's right. But you're a witch person. You know, you know, you're witches. (laughs) Some of my best friends are witches. Exactly. So you're like an authority. (laughs) Sort of, <laughs> yeah. So, what uh, about you mentioned uh, oh, the got, herb, sacred herbs of Fallon or like Halloween? What, what about Halloween as a uh, misconceived uh, holiday or or time of year? Well, what's happening now? Uh, Halloween is tomorrow night. Um, it's a commercial holiday, you know, <laughs> where kids eat a lot of candy and people get dressed up, but. The real Halloween is until November 11th. Remembrance Day. And, right. And I think somebody knew that. That's why they picked that day. Oh, interesting. We call, it, we call it Veterans Day. You call it Remembrance Day. But it's fascinating to me that they picked the old date for Halloween, which is the Day of the Dead. That's the day. 
And what do we do? We remember the dead. Wow. Interesting. How, how convenient is that, you know? But that's the real day. So the night of the 11th into the 12th, that would be the day. I'm dressing up as the Pumpkin King for Halloween. You mean tomorrow? Yes. Okay, for the commercial... For the commercialized secular, secular Halloween. For the actual Halloween, <laughs> I'm going to interview somebody <laughs> in Australia. Okay. Wow, well, uh, it's not Halloween for them. It's uh, May Day for them, right? Oh, interesting. Wait. We'll have a dual crossover holiday thing going on here. we got three holidays wrapped into two. All on one show. I have a question from the chats here I should ask you since you are a druid. Um, Mm -hmm. We've got a question from Oswald in the chats. Can you ask her opinion of the Archdruid Report's John Michael Greer? My opinion of of John Michael Greer? I guess so, yes. Of his reports or what what did he mean I think of John Michael Greer in general. We had John on the show years ago. Yeah, I haven't read his reports, but he has a very good reputation. I'm not me- a member of his group. I'm a member. I'm he's Ancient Order of Druids in America, mm-hmm. which uh, comes from the Ancient Order of Druids, which is a very English, very British, you know, Masonic derived tradition. And I mean, I I just know his reputation. He has a very good reputation. Uh, he's an environmentalist. He's highly reputable, but his path is nothing like my path. Mm-hmm. My path. Print. Are you guys like? Uh, do you guys ever? You guys like get along? Do you guys like? Is it all like tied in like Christianity would be? Like, do you guys would have some of the same holidays and stuff? Oh yeah, we all have the same holidays. That's what. <laughs> that's why I think it's a religion. When people say, "Oh, it's not a religion," I say, "Of course, it's a religion." Everybody has the same holidays. The solstices, the equinoxes, Samhain, which is Halloween, Beltane, which is yeah. in bulk, Lunasa. Everybody recognizes those festivals. That's a religion. You know, you have the, the, the liturgical wheel of the year. We all follow that. We all have the same holidays. You know. So is there any these, you know, superstitions or rituals that you do around Halloween for you know, the, the the trees are dying and things are darker compared to the Beltane when it's the opposite? Are you asking what I do personally? Oh, yeah, or, 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 or as group, or as a group, or as a religion, or, or personally, yeah, any of the above? Well, um, it's the time to honor the dead, and that means uh, it's very nice to have a supper uh, and put out a... Uh, have an empty chair. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody does this. You know, say your grandmother or your grandfather passed over. You know, just put a chair for your grandmother and um, light a little candle and put a candle at her seat and put a, a, a plate of food there for her as if she was sitting there. And uh, if you have any messages that you want to give to your grandmother, write them down on a piece of paper, put them by the candle, put the candle inside a jar. Uh, so it doesn't fall over or anything, and just leave it there until it goes out by itself. And um, well, we should do that on the eleventh. Yes, that would be the actual day to do it. A lot of pagans are doing it tomorrow, um, but they're uh, you know everybody's different. But not everybody's aware that the old date of Halloween was the eleventh. You have other people who say, "Oh, the exact midpoint." Uh, between the winter solstice and the fall equinox is November 7. So you have people doing things on November 7. But personally, what, what I like to do, what, what gets me excited, is I like to find the oldest traditions that I can and keep those going. And mm-hmm. that's what my books are about, my, my novels, my herbals, all my books. That's what I've done. I've, I've found the old, old, old ways, and i I'm constantly, I've done this for 30 years. I work to keep those ways alive. But you can put a dish of food out outside for wandering spirits, people that you don't know that just might be wandering by, you know. Light a candle, uh, put a, it's called a spirit plate, 
Native Americans do the same thing. When they have a festival, they always put out a spirit plate. We do it after we do a sweat lodge. I go down to do a sweat lodge sometimes, and the, and the medicine woman that does it puts out a spirit plate afterwards. Yeah. That's the exact same thing. Because what we're talking about here, we're, you know, Druidism is the old Celtic indigenous tribal tradition that we had before the missionaries showed up, you know, this is what we did. We honored the dead, and we didn't feel like the dead were gone. We felt like the dead were still here, so we honored them. And we honored the, the fairies and the nature spirits. We put things out for them. You know, and we, we honored the tree spirits. We put things out for them. It's like we were, we were honoring, we were, we were finding the divine in many, many places. We didn't have to go to church necessarily to be, you know, I like to say every tree is a church for a Druid. If a Druid sits under a tree, they're in church. That's a church. You know, the roots go down to the underworld, the branches go up to the sky world, the trunk is in this world, in the middle, in the land, the sacred land, where the animals are and the people. You know, that's a church. That's the three worlds. And, you know, you, you could have it, like, I'm looking at my, in my living room right now, I have two trees. I have, um, a, I have a lemon tree that I grew from seed, and I have a rubber plant that I've had for maybe 20, 25 years. They're both pretty big. Um, you can have, if you're working in an office, you could have a tree next to your desk, and nobody would know, and, and you would look at that tree and, and you would feel like you were connected to the three worlds, you know. What about the wandering spirits and what world do they belong in? And is there, you need the is there, some, sort of, is there some sort of practice of, you know, is there, are, are they trapped, these wandering spirits? Is there some sort of practice? Like people are doing like soul rescues at some of the uh, sort of modern uh, out-of-body experience uh, institutions and stuff. Do you guys practice anything like that? Well, if somebody's had a traumatic death, they might be trapped in fear, something like that. Um, but the, the Druid teaching, this is the actual ancient Druid teaching, death is but an interval in the midst of a long life. Mm -hmm. So we usually think of the dead as they're in the other world. We have this world and we have the other world. And they're just passing through until they they go to their next life. So eventually they'll make it out. They might just be temporarily engaged or they're reincarnated or, or whatever. Yeah, or they might be. It might be somebody that loves you very much and doesn't want to leave. That that you know you're. They might be hanging around to help you. Yeah. I mean, I I feel like I have spirits like that around me because they send me little little messages to let me know that they're there. Hmm. Um, do you remember yeah, any of so, those? Do you have pardon? any? Do you remember any of those messages or anything synchronistic that's happened or anything scary, maybe even for Halloween, anything like that? Uh, out of your personal experiences, you could share. Well, it's never scary. Um, I've heard there's somebody that calls my name when I'm when I'm sad. Mm -hmm. They call my name. Um, one time, I came home and there was a message on my answering machine. <laughs> And I swear it was my aunt who had died. Um, she loved birthdays. That was her thing. She was, she was always remembering people's birthdays and sending out cards. And um, her friend Lucy was with her when she died. And Lucy's birthday was coming up. And I came home and there was this message on my answering machine. And it sounded, it really sounded like somebody talking from a, a vast distance you know, very sort of hoarse, whispery, distant voice saying, don't forget her birthday, you know. And I said, oh, my God, it's my Aunt Jackie, you know. <laughs> but that was what, that's what she was obsessing about. On the other, on the other side, she's, she's obsessing about Lucy's birthday, which I thought was amazing. But I never forget Lucy's birthday. I always send her something, you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, things like that, like on Valentine's day, one time, um, I happen to be single now 
and um, I picked up my my uh, teacup, and there was a perfect heart in the bottom of my teacup. I mean, just picture perfect heart. So little things like that. I've seen those in the top of lattes, but never in the bottom. <laughs> and they're in the bottom. It was in the bottom of an empty teacup. <laughs> there was wow. nothing in there. Yeah. Wow. Well, that uh, I'm. Uh... You know, if I, if nothing else, I can get along with these witches on the mushrooms because I do think, you know, you can get more from a couple of good doses of mushrooms over a couple of years than you can from reading books in church. That's just my opinion. Well, well, there's a lot of studies now that mushrooms are psilocybin anyway. is very healing to people, people with post-traumatic stress, you know, uh, soldiers who've come back from battle and have post-traumatic stress disorder. The mushrooms are very helpful. And other issues, depression, anxiety, things like that, I mean, they've, they've proven that they really do affect the brain in very positive ways. And I think of them as teachers. It's teacher medicine. Yeah. So do you think that's why they had to wipe out 300,000 witches for trying to spread these mushrooms around that are, you know... You know, I like, you know, Bill Hicks said it best when he's like, you know, you don't, no one eats mushrooms and wants to invade countries. They want to go lie in a field and grass and just love the world, you know, like that's not real good for money. It's not good for the industrial complex. Well, it's interesting. But back then, I guess it didn't happen. One of the reasons that witches were persecuted was after the Black Death happened. And I've been trying to find out how many people died. You know, every source says something different, but. One source said 50% of the population of Europe died. Another source said 60% of the population died. And um, they, so they had a, a labor shortage, and you had all this land and nobody to, to till the land. And then you had serfs who all of a sudden had property because everybody was dead, so they, they just had land. They, you know, they took land and so on. Um, and so uh, you had women who were herbalists, uh, and herbalists have always known how to do this. They knew, how, they knew contraception, they knew abortion. You know, they delivered babies, but they also knew how to prevent babies. And when that much of the population was decimated, the last thing that the nobility wanted was women running around t- teaching other women how to uh, prevent conception. So that was another reason to persecute witches. Huh. Coming full circle here. <laughs> and yeah, now we're exactly. at like, yeah, exactly. I wonder what uh, not now now it's like it's changed. I wonder what the prescription rate for birth control would be for Well, it ha- I mean here in the states uh the Republicans are constantly trying to make abortion illegal. They don't want women in control of their reproduction. They don't want women planning families. You know, there are even politicians who are against contraceptives, which is unbelievable. You know, Ireland just voted to make abortion legal, and the United States is trying to go the other way. It's, it's crazy. It's a wild world. That's why I think it's all just a simulation. It's all just a, you know, we're running on some hard drive someone forgot about. <laughs> You Maybe think it's not. a hologram? Yeah, I <laughs> think it, it has to be, and it's like running out of stuff. So it's just recycling Donald Trump's and Kanye West and whatever else the fuck he can come up with to try and get through another couple years before it comes to a grinding halt. Yeah, they say we have about 30 years. That's it for the human race. Then we're going to be off planet, or we need more brooms full of mushrooms. One of the two. Right on. Well, big thanks for coming on the show, Ellen. Well, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Graham kind of derailed us for a little while there, but that's okay. We got her back on track. Well, I hope you guys get to see a a Sasquatch. I think that would be good. What was the word for him again? Gruaga. Gruaga. I like that so much better. We need a Gruaga shirt. Excellent. Yeah, look up the Gruaga. Right on. Well, good luck with your new book, uh, The Real Witches of New England, and we'll put a link to that in the show notes. And big thanks to Inner Traditions as well. Thank yeah. You. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It was fun. <laughs> and we hope you have a good Day of the Dead. 
Yeah. Yes. Happy Halloween to everybody. Yeah. I'm going to put my plate out for my dad. Are you? I'm going to seat out for him. What yeah. are you going to put on it? I'll write a little note with a candle. What are you going to put on it for it's food? Like Whatever I'm eating that day. We well, should make it like, like something he liked, his favorite. Yeah, whatever he liked. Beer, oh. whiskey. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know like what he liked for food. He was pretty easy going. Like, yeah, maybe just like a uh, shepherd's pie or something. Excuse to go buy a tub of ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I think he really liked ice cream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he liked chocolate and ice cream, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Alan. Thanks so much for the for the fun show. Okay, thank you. Happy, happy Fallon. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, All right. Bye. That was our chat with Ellen Evert the Druid. Hoffman, the Druid, on witchcraft and everything witches and uh, whether or not we should have open borders. It looks pretty good. <laughs> um, that was a fun chat. I like it. I... Uh, is that the is that the only two people we've talked to about witches now? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. There might, might have been, been one more in there. More, eh? hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting to know that or to, to realize how recent all this stuff happened too. Like it wasn't really too long ago when witches were being burned. Like she mentioned the latest Western, like without Saudi Arabia and Africa, it was Russia in the in the late nineties. Like really, Russia yeah. burned a witch. Yeah, where where were you during that Ouch. part of the podcast? That's crazy. We could beat that. I feel like we could beat that. We could beat it, yeah. I think there's like there's a good possibility a bitch, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a witch could be burned in the next decade, or something. It might not be a witch, but some sort of something. You know what I mean? I could yeah. see a group of people lighting someone on fire for not being the same as them. Yeah, it's probably closer than it has been in like. It's happening like already with like the walk Islamophobia and all that kind of shit, like. The way I see it is Muslim, like the Muslims now are going through the same things the Christians went through, right? Like it's just a, a cycle. Yeah, it's like a changing of, like like an upgrade to the religion, like a modernizing. Like the, the, the witch trials did it for Christianity and now it's happening with the Muslims. Not yeah, in America, though. Yeah, it's a tough one, man. Religion and politics. We should just fucking uh, just not stay interested. right out yeah, of all of them. Right? Or we could try and drag politics into our conversations on witches. <laughs> we go either way. Let's not do that. Not do that. Uh, I just hey, I just don't think the car- caravan is, is is what it seems. That's all. I didn't want to. Hey, I don't you appreciate my restraint stop, on stop, that? I could have. I could have restrained. Restrain further. Restrain further. Big thanks to Alan for coming on the show. Big thanks for the book. A big shout out to John Hayes, those yep. people over at Inner Traditions who have sent us, you know, nice, over a nice. hundred bucks at this point. No. Five years they've been sending no. us books. Not I came here the other day. Well, there was they, five that's because they go here. to your personal P.O. box and never make it to the studio. So I don't yeah, even right. see half these books. Yeah, right. So you just think the fucking <laughs> bookshelf in the studio just magically filled up with books. It's poof. Oh, look. <laughs> fucking magic. Must be from the open borders. <laughs> anyway. Big thanks to Ellen for coming on the show. Buy the book. Check it out. Check out the show notes, guys. Uh, there's a bunch of shit we ask you guys to do in there, like support the show, grammaricaca slash support. Um, yeah, all that stuff. You got to do that. Uh, right now, also Grimworks. If the, we were, we're having some troubles with Dream Host, so right now, grimworks.grammerica.ca works. Oh, that's how we get into the website? That's how you the can get into support, down? to support anyway. Yeah, we got to move. <clears throat> um, so support the show. Do everything in the show notes. Yeah, there's a whole list of stuff. There's a whole list of stuff. Re- review on iTunes is always helpful. We yeah, don't talk about that a while. We don't. Review the show, guys. Sign up for the P.O. Box letter. there for, for gifts and cash. Mail some stuff to the P.O. Box that doesn't explode. Preferably. Unless it's like some bomb shit, you know what I mean? Dirty socks. Dirty socks. Have you checked the P.O. box lately? Uh, yep. Someone no. said they sent some dirty socks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll go check it. All right. Later. All right, guys. That's about it. Thanks for listening. We will see you next week.
drops and she falls. Creeps and the crawls of the night on a wrong turn on the road. Just one kiss will roll me over. Drive me to bold. Felix sent you there 